This earth school is not an easy place for souls to evolve in. It is coveted by countless beings for it advances soul evolution more quickly by providing an array of challenging experiences as compared to other less dense planetary systems. Adversity burns through karma in ways ease does not. You know from personal experience how much more you grow and mature through difficulty than when things are going nice and smooth as planned. And so this difficult, low vibrational 3D plane is one desired by many brave souls wishing to alchemize their shadow imprints expeditiously. Our global chaos is a glorious opportunity for this karmic alchemy and thus spiritual advancement, an experience of suffering incarnating souls intentionally chose given their evolutionary needs. Hard as it has been for so many in terms of adverse reactions, loss, uncertainty, etc., these dire experiences are catalyzing spiritual awakening. We are in a perfect storm, you could say, with each person affected by and learning through this mess and hysteria in their own perfect way. God, Creator, is quite willing to allow us to suffer. You'll notice how higher forces are not rushing in to save us from the chaos, not even children. Why would a loving God allow this to happen, you might ask, allow so much pain and destruction? Our Divine Creator holds such a high degree of respect for our learning and evolution. Our journey as light warriors navigating the most difficult experiences in order to gather the elixirs we yearn for and have come to discover and serve others from. Indeed, God is not an insulating helicopter parent bubble wrapping her children, fencing in the infinite spectrum of dark and light to allow only so much experience. Rather, our Divine Mother and Father allow for life's archetypal cycles in all their extremities, spun by dark and light, to play their part in our soul advancement. Strange as this may seem, there is such love in the boundless go forth and explore non-interference, a conviction to not limit our free will, our power, purpose and possibilities, our longing to blossom and reach for the stars in our own unique way, and thus the sublime, unimaginable blessings that await us all. Though there are moments of divine mercy and grace for those open and ready, and spiritual guides in the wings, our Creator knows the important purpose of Dark Knight's archetypal gateways, its crucibles of pain, loss, powerlessness, hopelessness, and uncertainty to bridge us to new light. All this can be hard to digest, yet we must understand why we are here. If you believe, like most, that you have come to Gaia to watch TV, fall in love, have a family, some friends, a decent job, a few hobbies, a night out here and there, you know, the usual, if you think this quote-unquote normal is what your human experience is primarily about, then my words might seem offensive or far out. But if awake enough, you may find truth in this video, truth that even challenges the quote-unquote conspiracy theorists who, in many ways, are awake to what is going on, but are often caught in right-wrong dualistic thinking, mesmerized by the bad guys versus the good guys, and who, through their polarizing judgment and fear, are unwittingly contributing to dualistic victim-perpetrator consciousness while not seeing the larger holistic picture I am proposing. They are projecting their unprocessed fear and victimhood instead of being a spiritual warrior and taking responsibility for each in full. Yet even the truth-telling conspiracy theorists are playing a key role for their own growth, for that of countless others. I'm truly grateful for what they have revealed to me, 
and I could easily be considered one myself. Everyone, everyone on the spectrum of light to dark is playing their role in this collective saga of awakening. It's a perfect, paradoxical system if you trust it. It's a perfect, paradoxical system if you trust it. There is wisdom in naming the dark agendas, which I have done, words I stand by today. There are ways we can be of service by boldly wielding our God-given sword, by stating the obvious abuses of power and taking clear, concrete action to eliminate suffering and pave new paths of peace. Yet, there is even higher wisdom I am inviting you to consider that of stepping back, holding loving space for, and being a compassionate witness of what is unfolding and what must unfold without judgment, without fear, and the need to rescue. The need for life to be a certain way. There is humility here, a bowing to life as is, a humility that accepts that we do not know what is best for another's evolution, how their suffering serves them, others, and thus the collective. It can take courage to fight something, but it can take even more courage to accept it. This doesn't mean we are numb to or condone suffering that we don't feel sadness or anger. Being awake doesn't mean we stop being warm-blooded humans. Rather, with soul advancement, we don't react as we once did. We can hold compassionate space for suffering and insanity because we've learned to hold more compassionate space for what we feel within. Far from an intellectual grab and far from easy, this is divine wisdom and embodiment hard-earned. This is divine wisdom and embodiment hard-earned. And what we have come to evolve into over hundreds of lifetimes, not simply understand. It comes from doing the heroic inner work of healing our pain, overcoming our victim identity, purifying our heart, and anchoring our higher self into our DNA and the outer work of living boldly from higher truth. In many small stages, through many diverse experiences, dark is transmuted into light. We learn to embody the God within that holographically perceives and acts as a perfect mirror of divine source that unconditionally accepts and allows. progressively accepting the quote-unquote good, bad, and ugly inside through many lifetimes creates quantum space in our DNA and allows for higher truth to be our embodied truth. With less resistance to all that is within, we naturally accept and allow the full spectrum of dark and light in our outer world. We learn to let go of control inner and outer increasingly alchemically merge and are experienced as one harmonious system which is our return to oneness. Eventually, with enough healing and soul embodiment, we completely stop expecting the world to conform to how we want it to be, the projections of unresolved fear. Detached from our inner suffering, we now have the ability and courage to fully walk away from the fearful one inside that must rescue others from their perfect storm. All resistance dissolves. The deepest exhale into the sunset of soul we travel, the higher place from which we can serve, the truth of who we are, a world left behind our longings finally fulfilled. We move and breathe in rhythmic concert with life, as life, which is peace.
only from this embodied expression of divinity that our many avatars have lived and taught from can we serve from our highest potential. Can we, as self-realized way-showers, hold and transmit frequencies of non-dual consciousness unfiltered by fear, shame, and personal right, wrong, and good, bad agendas? Can we speak and act fiercely at times with our tongue and doings consecrated with the impulses of divine will? Love, compassion, wisdom, and peace the highest medicine, the cosmic mana, for these and all divisive times, unbound by polarizing stories and judgments, can emanate through our stargate bodies, transmuting fragmented dark imprints that souls have bravely come to burn through, products of separation consciousness going back many lifetimes. We, in our advanced embodied awareness, our awakened Christ or Buddha unity consciousness, can serve those ready and open for more, those who have graduated from their humbling, amnesic-induced lessons catalyzed in part by these chaotic times, and who can now transcend their current karmic path into higher states of ascension and rhythmic embodiment working on behalf of the One. As wise teachers, elders, sages, and saints long have, we can, in our purified, open state, steward the great river as it intends to move. We move as one with it, not against it, for we have transcended all fear, all that resists life, to merge with the way. This is our higher holy purpose, our remembering, and these sacred waters and currents are what these pivotal times initiate us into.